Yeah. Boom. And then boom. Ooh, look See, at that. Yeah. If you just turn it yeah. off, turn yeah. it back on. Reset. <laughs> Reboot. <laughs> Works again. Okay. Bring us in. All right. Laird guy. Laird guy. I'm a Laird guy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Welcome back to Sandcast Podcast. Gabby, welcome back. Laird, welcome to Sandcast Podcast. As you said earlier, I'm newly a Laird Apparel athlete. So thanks for having me on the team. Yeah. And more importantly, thanks for having us in your house and uh, letting us enjoy the pool and the workout and all the just good energy on your guys' property. We're stoked to be here. Well, it's always good to see you guys. And isn't it, is it strange for you to have athletes with, that wear your apparel? Yeah, well, I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful to have them athletes on, you know, wearing the apparel. It's, yeah. it, it's funny. I was wondering, it's I was a transition, of, another transition. When right. we were in the sauna, I was like looking at everyone's board shorts. I was like, is RVCA allowed in the sauna? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Luca's... Hey, whoever is, wants to pay Luca. Is Ruka, that's okay. right. Oh, yeah. Got Go it. for Luca. Yeah. 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 For sure. Luca and Ruka. Yeah. 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 G Luca. Yeah, when, it, when I first well, he's saw Filipino it. he's Filipino too. That, yeah. that, that, that's, oh, okay. So it, well, because Pat. Yeah. Pat's Pat. Filipino. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it's a good... They got a Filipino thing going. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Um... When I first saw the Laird, Laird Apparel and uh, Cam and Theo, the other two guys, are were wearing it, I was like, and they were in the, the sweatshirt with the big Hawaiian Islands, and me and Trevor were partnering up, and just like, this this is just not right. <laughs> the like, Canadian guy with the Hawaiian Laird, Islands. Laird, <laughs> yeah. what's the deal, Laird? Like, let's go get these guys in the water, see what happens. <laughs> and then they're wearing the big Hawaii jacket. I was like, this, like, I need to be on this team. Like, this is just not working out. And then it worked. Well, that's so great. So here we are. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like no, I said, stoked. we're honored to have have your talent. So that's right. yeah, no, we need we need we need soldiers. So. Yeah, hey, I'm a soldier for sure. Let's go to work. But I I've had a lot of, you know, we're half beach lifestyle sport, but also like a real you know whatever land sport. And so we're not, we're not always getting like beach gear. Like I'm playing beach volleyball, but then I can't go jump in the water and go body surf in them. So now I have like real ocean board charts and i'm just like okay now now everything's right in the world yeah but they said body serving probably not not a option like if you're playing in you know switzerland or something uh, no. yeah, if, if i see a body of water when you're at manhattan yeah. beach yeah but at the switzerland open it might be like uh jump in the frozen lake yeah exactly, exactly. Maybe which get, is still good maybe you got like a, little, a barrel like the river's hitting a rock or yeah. something yeah, yeah, yeah a little yeah. boarding at yeah. lake zurich yeah, we did. Where? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did some uh, wake surfing in Austria. They had a, oh. at Klagenfurt, you, mm-hmm. you're probably familiar, they they would take us off, or the player's tent was a dock. A floating dock. Floating dock, mm-hmm. and then the boat would pull up, and we can go out and like wake off of it. Yeah. Try to, try to bend your knee right before the match. Yeah, it was more like when you lost, <laughs> yeah. have some yeah, drinks and go. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on who you are. But. Drag your own some suffering. Yeah, go Drag your suffering. Half the guys were like drowning out there it was for our entertainment. It was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's so cool to see what you guys have built. Like there's just so many different layers to like you have you're one of the best big wave surfers ever you're still one of the first people who comes to mind like a producer from cnn was talking about volleyball the other day like oh like gabby reese and so you're still like one of the biggest names in volleyball and then you have the superfoods and now you have the laird apparel and then you've built this such a cool community out here like do you guys ever take time to reflect and be like this is pretty awesome like what we've been able to build here um i think we separately are are like grateful and aware because you're really fortunate if you get to do what you like to do for a living and do it with somebody you love and do it in a space that you believe in. You know, it's like mm-hmm, easy yeah. to talk about Laird Superfood or XPT or Laird Apparel. But I think sometimes you're so busy solving problems all the time. And um, it's maybe from the outside, everything, you know, people always maybe look more successful or it seems easier. Right. And so I think you're so busy living and trying to hit your own marks, like in your relationship with your children, with your businesses, that um, it's a combination. Yeah. yeah. Well, and parenting always keeps, gets you right back to the reality. <laughs> yeah. You think, hey, you're feeling well good, and then you get your 15 year old to slap you down, you know, yeah. keep you in check. <laughs> yeah. 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 When yeah. there's this, uh, a famous saying that I love that, you know, it says, never let your memories be bigger mm-hmm. than your dreams. And I, like I think you're, if you're striving and you're, focusing and like gabby says you're dealing with the day-to-day details i think it is important to step back and of course always be thankful and appreciative if you're 
doing stuff that you love that you're that's you know health that you and I think a lot of it is that you feel good about mm-hmm. like that you can feel good like I'm not involved in too many I mean we're not involved in too many th- businesses or you know endeavors in general that we don't feel good about whether it's our relationship whether it's our kids mm-hmm. whether it's the companies that we're in we feel good mm-hmm. about this stuff yeah. so and and so that's something that I think is you know, uh, we're, I'm just glad that I don't have to be involved in too many things I don't feel good about. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, maybe sometimes this, you know, the drudgery of, of uh, you know, the the training and the, and the you know, hey, you're doing dishes, you're taking kids to school, you're, I mean, you're, you're you know, you're taking the trash out. I mean, you're always right. getting, and I think that's important to keep you honest because that keeps you empathetic of what it takes to do things. But, but yeah, I mean, if you're, when you're in it, it's hard. It, it is important to step back and be like, oh yeah, that is, it's amazing that, you know, I have a friend that flies helicopter and he's like, Hey man, I, you know, you and Gabby, she played volleyball and you surf and look, I mean, what do I mean? I'm like, Oh yeah, that, that is great. <laughs> but when you're in it, you're not like, it's not right. like, cause it still is, it still is effort. Right. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, no matter what you're doing, it's, you're still going to be putting effort in. It's right. like, if you're going to be a good carpenter, it's effort. Like yeah. it's, you gotta, so yeah. you hope you love it because, right. <laughs> because no matter what you're doing, you're going to be putting effort in. So it's nice. I mean, I'm, I'm honored to get to do something that we love for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you I can think, get I think something swallowed. really important that both Laird and I were always doing individually is typically we wouldn't do things even when we were really young that we didn't believe in. And so, so let's say someone's listening to this. I think it's really important people realize um, maybe we didn't want bosses, but that means you'd have to work on a Sunday right? Um, or at mm. 9 p.m., yeah. <laughs> right? You'd have to be willing. So I think, you know, it's like also realizing that it is possible to create the life that you want and the things you do want to be solving, but that you will have to work more or differently than, let's say, a 9 to 5 or something like yeah. that. And that then no matter what... You're fortunate, right? Yeah. Well, because, you got to be your own boss. You got to be your own motiv- motivator. Yeah. You're like, okay, yeah. today, time to get up, yeah. time yeah. to go, got to do it. And it's like so, no one's going, hey, get up, time to go, yeah. got to do it. You got to tell yourself, hey, get up, time to and go. And I think that's something really important for whatever, even if people are entrepreneurs or what have you. It's like, oh, they look how they got to do it. And it's like, yeah, because they were going to do what it took to do that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Well, and you, and you always got to do things you really don't want to do too. Right. Yeah. Right? You're doing some stuff you don't want to do. I mean, <laughs> right. most of the time. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff or you don't want to do. It. Yeah. yeah, and I think it speaks. I think when you're you see someone who has the longevity, like in big wave surfing, I mean, you've been one of the top big wave surfers for pretty much your whole life, really. And uh, when you love what you do and you're super passionate about it, it, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work. Like my wife, all the time, she's like, "Well, you work really hard." I'm like, "What? Well, I fun really hard. Like I podcast and write and play volleyball. It's really fun. Like to a lot of people, that is a lot of work. Like if try tried to do my schedule, I'd be like, "Bro, no, yeah, you can't do that." But if I tried to do dry schedule, I'd be like, "Bro, right. <laughs> I, I found lately it's been weird. Like I've been super burnt out lately, or like playing with that." that boundary but i'm more stressed out when i stop working because i like expect things to like be a certain way like okay i'm gonna go home relax and like oh now i have to like do my other things in the world you Mm -hmm. know and i have like this expectation of it to be easier than my work but i actually enjoyed the the work and the grind of it so it's like kind of backwards in my head right now so it's good hearing. I think stuff. Laird can relate to that in a big way. Well, and I think you know, I think <laughs> so, you, something important to realize when you, when you have that fully loaded schedule, when it's just dawn to dusk every day, and you're kind of like just making it through it, is is it's real clear what you're doing, hmm. and that's great because then you don't you're not sitting around wondering what you're not doing, right? And which yeah. is that, like you said, that can be harder. So in 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 one way, it's kind of cool, and it is. I, I have experienced this thing where. When you first start like a certain output, you do some big challenge and then, you know, you're two couple days into it, maybe a couple weeks into it, whatever. And you're just like, wow, I don't know if I can pull this. Mm. Like this is, I don't think I can. And we're, humans are so adaptable that you'll just find all of a sudden the thing will just go, yeah. and it'll be like the new normal. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I have this new normal. Right. That this output that I can, I can put this out and do this and it'll be the new normal. All of a sudden you'll be like how you were when you had little less that you were doing and you the comfort you had in that you're going to have comfort in this new level it it happens it's yes. pretty interesting but you got to survive that 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 rockiness of the yeah. beginning and that's what separates a lot of people is that in that transition they 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 let the 
they just they just don't think they can keep sustaining that output and then and then they miss the the gear change yeah you know they miss that but it, it you'll just go you'll just be like the new norm like oh yeah well we're sleeping two hours every you know we're every four hours and we're running the rest of the time and we're doing that for days on end and okay that's our new norm like that yeah. and so you can you'd be surprised but you but that's that also makes you a lot more kind of connected to what you actually need personally to actually do that too, yeah you know so it's not that you can't do it once you get to that hard point it's that you haven't adapted to it yet exactly so you have to just kind of weather it, it yeah you'd be surprised what yeah, you can okay, yeah. no i'm just saying but you'd, <laughs> okay, be, but you'd be surprised you'd be surprised how much you can i think i mean listen i think we have the capacity to so far beyond what oh, we yeah. think we can do so if you're even in the realm of what you think you can do yeah. i think you're still you're still just both, you know, you're still yeah. inside the barrier. You're still kind of within the, the, with, the water just taught us that a little bit earlier today when Gabby was pointing it out of like, just like getting to the end of that breath. You're like, mm, not going to make it. But like she knows, and we knew I probably could have just pushed through and gone all the way back that last leg. Yeah. But instead it was like, no, nope, yeah. not up for air. Yeah. But like the body probably could have done down and back the brain. Maybe not. Yeah. Well, we're always looking just, for the yeah. path of least resistance, right? Yeah. We're always just looking. I mean, it's part of what has allowed us to have success in a hostile environment mm -hmm. that we always were, you know, conserving energy and yeah. trying to get to the, to, you know, trying to avoid all the, because if we didn't do that, we probably would have got hammered. So, <laughs> so, but now that we have abundance, it's not, it's working against us yeah. a little bit. We've gone past the point when it was beneficial. It was right. beneficial before and then all of a sudden now it's not beneficial because we're not even to the we have the same mindset but we're not near the threshold you know yeah it's like 100%. yeah we're like have you uh have you guys read the comfort crisis yeah yeah it's, and i interviewed so you had michael Easter on mm -hmm. he was great yeah. yeah that one i read that at the beginning of the year and it's like one of those books that just like sticks with you mm -hmm. it's like that's a life changer right there yeah. and then i immediately like now i have a, an elk tag in colorado doing like an eight day back country hunt in November, like that's going to be uncomfortable. I'm yeah. going to do it. Like getting in the water. Like Try was saying, like when you're running out of breath, it's uncomfortable. But when you like push through that barrier and get like to the last wall, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. Like it's, well, in the it stories helps. we tell ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. I think that that is yeah. more than 50% of the deal in everything in life mm -hmm. about what it's going to be like, how's it going to be, and all this energy we spend towards, you know, projecting the story that we, we've told ourselves about an unknown or something new or something hard or mm -hmm. well that little voice it's that little yeah that the what she talks about that in the art about uh, the art of fear yeah we talk a little voice that little voice isn't really you it's not really you that little voice that's saying hey you got to come up right now because you know you're gonna run out of air you better right. get breath <laughs> i mean you're not gonna be able to do it longer that's mm -hmm. actually not you that's just like this 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 system that's in place to try to protect you like an alarm system yeah it's like a protection but it's not actually you that's why when you get there you're like hmm that wasn't as bad as i thought it was that isn't that the same voice the, the one that, that that says it wasn't as bad as i thought it was isn't the voice that was saying you better go up now you better think drop your weight swim to the surface right. gonna, you know, it's like yeah. all that stuff it's this other little chirper that that probably like i said i think was must have been important when Back, oh, for sure, back yeah. when we needed it. Right. And now it just seems to be a distraction. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. like, huh. And there's just no more haunting feeling than when you give in to that little voice chirping mm. and you come up and you're like, oh, why'd I stop? Mm. <laughs> like I could have done that last rep or no, whatever it may no. be. And so I feel like once you give up and you get that, that is actually helpful in the long run. You're like, I don't want to feel like that yeah. ever mm. again. Where you leave a tournament where you're like, I could have done more. Or like I could have practiced, like could have prepped more. Like those haunting feelings are super important, even though you never want to have them. Yeah. Like it's good to have they that in the back you. of your mind. Yeah, we do. Do. I don't know if you guys watch Alcaraz just barely get beat by Djokovic. Yeah. But there was a quote to your point that um, Alcaraz said, I don't know why I was crying. I did my very best. Yeah. And he obviously he did. Mm -hmm. You watch the game. I mean, I don't know how much That's better you could be. a great rivalry too coming up. I know, mm -hmm. but I, it was just a very interesting thing. He's like, I don't know why I was emotional because I really gave everything I had. Mm -hmm. So that you wouldn't get that voice. Right. You know, you've had that in volleyball where there are days where you could win and you knew you actually weren't that good. So it was like, yeah, okay, that right. was okay. That's confusing. And that's almost... That, <laughs> yeah. No, but it is. But, it, but also no, you know. can lose yeah. and be like, that 
team was better because I did everything I could. And somehow that feels satisfying almost more right. in a different way. I, that's, I can relate to that. Yeah. You I'd can? rather lose. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I think like <laughs> if you, if you failed and you know that you were performed with the, with maximum and the best yeah. effort you had. Yeah. I mean, I, I got no problem living with that. It's like just that? when you're when you when you fail, when you know you could have done a, yeah, something a little. Then that is even when you win, it's confusing. You're not like, yeah, I won, but that just that's a shallow Do victory. Do you ever have yeah. that on a wave? Is there something like you think, oh, I could have done differently on a wave? No, I don't feel like you. Know yeah, that. well, that's why you never jump off. <laughs> You never jump but off. But I don't think, I never have heard you say in 20 I never whatever jump, years. Don't jump off. No, I, but I'm, I've heard you say that, but I've never heard you be like, you know, at that one point I could have done this instead of that. I've never heard you say that. Maybe I just did it so often growing up that, like. Is that, is that it? <laughs> I think so. It probably happened early. I mean, you had a lot of hours out there. So, you know, yeah, just be. did that so many times. You're like, okay, don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, I mean, that's just time, the volume. When you have that many hours at that you have point, an interesting it came in late. Though yeah, you're talking about later, later, though. Well, let's see. There's no like later. In, I've known you for 28 years. Later. You can't beat the ocean. No. There's no. Even if you get that barrel, yeah, it's on the picture behind me. Yeah. Oh. You didn't like beat the ocean. No. No. Right. You look. Yeah. I don't even know what you call that. Well, I call it. A, <laughs> I I say that, that it's like in harmony, harmonious mm-hmm. that you're able to. It, you're it allowed in harmony you. with it, right? You're in har- it allowed you. It uh, allowed you, and you did what was right to. In the, in the allowance. Yeah. Like it said, oh, sure. You want to come through? Right. Go ahead. Now's your Take chance. Take your shot. Yeah, here's, Take your shot. Your and if you do everything right, you get through and it allowed you to go by. And you're like, great, <laughs> I made it. Or it didn't allow you to go by. So, yeah. But, you, but yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a harmonious. That's why uh, when you hear any kind of, I took, I, you know, I conquered that. Right. Or I'm just like, um, those, no, those aren't words you can use mm-hmm. when you talk about a human and the ocean. Yeah. You didn't conquer it. Like yeah. there's no conquering it. Like we're so all about conquering. You know, oh, I conquered that. The like no, you, you didn't. Like it just let you go into the ocean with that belief. Mm. You're toast. Oh right? yeah. 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 I'm gonna yeah. conquer you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> that big buff guy. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Jump in the shore break. Yeah. <laughs> The more buffed you are, the worse it is because your attitude is going to be wrong. You're going to come there thinking you can just implement power, and it's that's. But water does that alone. Even you don't Mm. even need a wave for it to do that. Like the ocean's just alive, but like just the water in general seems to do that. To if you add, if you bring aggression to it, I think it's so conductive. It's almost like oh, you bring aggression here. Let me right. I'll show you what I do with aggression. Like I'll, it'll just grab you and hold right. you. If I, you have to come in kind of with a weird submit submission mm-hmm. thing, you have to kind of submit to it, and then it, and then you within that you can you can make moves, but it, you have yeah. to be submitting first. Mm-hmm. First you submit, then you move. You don't try to like subject. You're not going to come in. Right. And I we see that the water is a great telltale for people. Mm-hmm. You just can bring people in the water, and you just put them in there and put a tie a weight on them and watch them and they just, oh, oh, oh hey, whoa. Like, you're not going to get in a true. dangerous situation. <laughs> yeah. no, Don't true. be with him. Yeah, Don't be yeah, anywhere yeah, yeah. near that guy. He'll <laughs> freak from out him. on you. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it does that yeah. to you. It's such a good metaphor. I mean, probably when you're getting stressed too. too. Yeah, but probably when you're getting stressed, like you get, like you don't know how guys are going to play until you get to like the real grind thing when you've been grinding for, and in that real, and you might just see it for a brief second. Mm -hmm. You know, the pool bring it out in one minute and the shallow end. But but competitional, I mean, we have it everywhere. It's just it's in that when you get people stress and you get them in the right spot yeah you'd be like huh oh yeah i mean that's probably why you lose teammates you just see them you see them in right. their moment and you go yeah i can't rely on you when i really when really I need, need to and you probably don't even see that until you're just it, only not, only in very few matches at few moments yeah, you get yeah, a, yeah, you get yeah. to it rears its head and you're 100%. like oh yeah no nope. yeah you find right. out a lot about oh, a guy sure. at 13 12 in the third set when <laughs> okay. you're getting served exactly exactly <laughs> that's what i mean yeah, oh, 100%. yeah. That's, that's like the deep end with the dumbbell <laughs> yeah huh? like are you taking chances or playing yeah. It safe yeah 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 or are you just like, tightening up are you i always like the surprising people they're kind of mm. sleepers and then they just kill it and crush mm-hmm. it and don't crack or waver mm-hmm. in the real pressure you're like oh it's the quiet killer surprise yeah. <laughs> well you just because you don't know who they are until you actually get in you into the now. situation yeah. and it's, it's 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 i think that's true with i mean you're going to see i think there's a formulaic process to life itself like and there's like you're just going to get 
to that place in some places sooner than later, you know, but when yeah. you really get squeezed, you can have friends for 30 years and never really test the friendship for real. Right. Like you can just be like, oh yeah, have fun and cool and right. have a few things and this and that, but never really test it. And then one day you get a real test and you're kind of like, huh. You know what? I don't really like you that much. That wasn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But, you know, or you'll be like, hmm, I like you a lot and I can rely on you. It's pretty, it is interesting. Life is that mm -hmm. way. We can, we have these things that we think mean so much. And then when you really get them squeezed, I mean, even probably a relationship too. You don't yeah. really know about that until you get squeezed and then you go, oh, okay. Are you someone that I can rely on when? Yeah. When the house is on fire. <laughs> yeah, well, it seems pretty relevant nowadays, or just in general, like with the fires that happen, you know, like actual semi-natural disasters happening all over the place. And at least as I'm getting older, I'm seeing more of those, you know, I'm going through experiencing and seeing how peop certain people are reacting. Even like the the flood in Hanalei, when I was, I was at Waikoko when Hanalei flooded a few years ago. And I, and, and I got the call too. It's like, Laird's down here, like saving people on <laughs> boats or something. Like, what do you mean saving people? And he's like driving down the street. The streets are underwater. But we were with a, a big group of people, and then you just kind of see who's mm -hmm. doing what and acting how they're acting in that situation. It's like, okay. Like, yeah. Just, are they handling? How are they handling? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What did the guy? There's a great quote. The guy said, "Be someone people can rely on at a funeral." You know, mm, like good one. be, be, you know, yeah. I mean, you could go cry after and behind, but right. be the, be the pillar in there, stand yeah, yeah, straight yeah. tent. And, you know, I think that's for me, I feel like it's all, all of life just kind of is going by for those moments. Like the whole thing is just set, set up for that opportunity. And so <laughs> let's see how you operate. Yeah. You, know, you have yeah. to go through your whole life yeah. and deal with all this stuff so that you can have a few brief moments of testing to right. see. I mean, and maybe, you know, some situations induce it more, but you know, it seems like we go through life and then you have a couple opportunities to how you're going to behave when you, right. when you get a little, yeah, a little squeeze, you know, Sometimes for your you almost yeah for everybody, for sure, and in so many different ways. Like it could be going to the Olympics or <clears throat> dealing with a natural disaster or just dealing with your kid. You know, when you're already stressed out and they're having a tantrum, you're just like, <laughs> I want to have a tantrum too. <laughs> We're both at that point, yeah. and then okay. And I'm bigger than you, so imagine what I can do. Yeah, I could win in this tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what kids are this? That's the, <laughs> that's, 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 the uh, that's the fire. That's the tempering of the soul. Yeah. I told somebody, I go, parenting is like building a samurai sword. And you know, I use that as a parable. And they go, well, what do you mean? I go, well, you know how they build a samurai sword? Is they take steel, they heat it until it's red hot. They beat it with a hammer and then they stick it in ice. And they just do that over and over. And then it's the strongest steel in the world. I go, your kids, they take you, they heat you up until you're red hot. They beat you with a hammer. <laughs> and then they stick you in a bucket of ice. And they do that over cool. and over. Pretty soon you're tempered. You're like, when you're, you're funny. You're like a veteran. You're just like, yeah, what can you throw at me now? Right. <laughs> you know? And you have the ultimate test, too, with three daughters. Yeah. <laughs> like Gab was saying, it's not real parenting. Do you have a girl? <laughs> yeah, it's a different kind of parenting. You can get like yeah, your well, master's, your PhD, to. or, you know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. the nuance of emotions and, uh, yeah. you know, I, and I say this complimentary, I think women are complex beings. And <laughs> I mean, I just think yeah. and girls are practicing, yeah. right? And their, their, their oh, awareness, course. their intuitiveness, yeah. and their, sharp their and needs their and stuff. You it's see how it cuts. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about guys. It's There's some variable that it feels pretty straightforward. Yeah, we'll see yeah like cavemen. Yeah. Rock, stick, uh, yeah. goose, goose, goose. Like, well, yeah. pretty, you know, get us tired. Totally. Yeah. Boys, feed, feed us. Guy <laughs> relationships, like too. Just like, like yeah. Girls, it's more the, the mental yeah, yeah. jiu-jitsu. Yeah. 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 And they and we they can. sort of require you. Uh, they call you on some of your stuff that you've drugged from your childhood into your adult life. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they hone in on it pretty good, and they call you on it, and it's super, can be super uncomfortable. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> you guys seem pretty well equipped for it, though. <laughs> and you know, it's, it it's, just it's, looks like that. You haven't seen my back. It's like, it's all guy got lashes across. Really, so. really, they're, they're actually in certain ways tougher on Laird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, the notion of resistance is futile. I think 
it's sort of like, I don't know, if you have a certain habit that is like simply not working, you know, you make a change. And I think with kids, it's like you're not going to bang your head against the wall over and over. You're going to say, OK, I'm, I'm willing to change. And I heard something really cool where if a kid, especially if they're going through a hard time, the parents will drop them off somewhere like, OK, you got to fix my kid. Like they'll go to a therapist or a right. counselor or something. It's like, yeah, no, everyone has to have a conversation. Yeah. You know, so I think we've had enough of those, the those that, opportunities. You know, Caesar, the <laughs> pet guy. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. What, what does he do? He just usually fixes the dog owners. He's like, oh, I got this dog. It has a yeah, lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. So he sits the guy down. And he goes, okay, now, yeah. when you're doing this, <laughs> yeah. you're doing that. That's and all of a sudden, like, wow, my dog is fixed. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. He does. So we're, we've he been fixes doing the dog. Long enough, he fixes the owners. We're kind of They're like, hey, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. I've been fixed a few How times. Fix? <laughs> <laughs> Can you fix my dog? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Come here. Sit down. Yeah, yeah. Dog here. Talk. yeah. <laughs> that's what you realize. It's really uncomfortable, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what they call it parenting. Yeah. It's not for the, if it was for the kids, it would be called kidding. So it's called parenting because it's for the parents. It's, right. like, it's like the evolution of our, our growth. Like it's our, our evolution. Like that's when we, that's why we kind of need to go through it ultimately is because it's part of our, yeah. uh, of our, you know, we go first for kids and then we're adults and then we get, to, we got to become parents so that right. we can get that last little, you know. Shaping a little polish, <laughs> the polish, but yeah. you know, about polishing takes a long time. Like, and it's, somehow, there's a lot of it takes a long time to polish. Be dead before my polish comes to <laughs> one scratch, you'll be there for a while. To <laughs> yeah, take yeah, it yeah. It's almost like when you think about it, you're like, we don't really need more humans on earth, like, like the earth will be okay if I don't make more humans. Like, yeah, why do I, why do I want to keep doing this? But like, there's just this for every like tough thing there is, it just it's outweighed a little bit more with like the love part of it. And oh yeah. Like, oh oh yeah. Screw it. Let's do it again. Then oh, like, yeah. Why would I want one more? Like no way. And then it's like. Eh. <laughs> they need now friends. Now I have like <laughs> yeah. twelve nieces and nephews. Yeah. Luckily, I'm the youngest, so I get to watch. That was that was always my advantage. And we still get baited in, even with all that, right? You still you're watching. You're like it would seem seem like watching would probably make you avoid it, but then somehow right. you just walk right in and go well. Yeah. Must be okay because everybody else is. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't you ever view <laughs> then yourself? Then you're in there and you're like, it's not okay. Why did I? Why did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but have you ever had those it's moments okay. where you, you view yourself it. and you you like, oh my god, I'm a cliche. Have you ever had that in your life? Yes. Like you're doing something and you are from the outside viewing yourself and oh, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm a cliche. I'm straight when out did of that? Sitcom. When did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. Well, especially like our well, volleyball community cliches. is like. You know, it's tight knit, but it still has that party community young vibe. Yeah. And then like instantly I'm just like the old guy on yeah. tour with the kid and the family. Like, no, why would I? I'm not coming with you guys. I have a kid. I have stuff to do. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm that guy. Yeah. I gotta, I'm what the kind no of diapers fun are you guys guy. using? Yeah. Yeah. You just instantly turn into no fun guy. Like, I work too much. I'm too busy. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, shit. Damn it. Parenting's such yeah. a different kind of fun and joy. Like... Delaney the other day, she's so tired, my wife. And then she was like, she had had it with Austin, our son. Yeah. I mean, he had just been fussing for two hours. And then he laughed one time. And she was like, I love him so much. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, there's just yeah. nothing like seeing your kid laugh and smile. And he's like four months. Yeah. And he doesn't even know what he's laughing or smiling at. We're like, oh, that was me for sure. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's like life peak right it, there. It's the yeah. way it's set up. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Someone planned this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they said if you if your kids look like old people that we that we wouldn't even take care of them. They have to be cute and like if they were look like old, <laughs> old yeah, thing, you'd right. be this like and they were acting like they're acting. You're like, oh my god, just don't even, just, yeah. just get away from me. But they're like so cute. You're just like, oh, it's okay that you just vomited on me and then yeah. you, and then, you know like, like you got diarrhea and I'm changing your diaper and it's on me and it's and you're crying for four hours and I'll just be like, yeah. But you otherwise you'd be like, oh, wait a second. Mm, you, you look like a miserable one. Yeah. <laughs> well, after Benjamin Button's parents just didn't do it. Right. No. <laughs> they were old by the time he got young and it just didn't work. When, uh, when we were talking in the kitchen earlier about just education, you're like, you know, if you want to go to college, go to college, awesome. But I think that you guys have like the most real world education. And whenever I come up here, I'm like, I'm going to Laird and Gabby University. I'm going to learn some things yeah. today. Because you guys have so many little things that have stuck with me so much. Like, I think when you were on Rogan, Rogan was like, what's your diet? Like, how have you stayed at such a high level for so long? You're like, I eat plants and animals. I was like, what a great role. 
It was so easy. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I'm gluten this, soy this, whatever. It's like plants and animals. That works. Yeah. You guys just have so many little things. I'm like, I'm keeping that. I think you know from probably having a, hopefully you've had a good coach or two. Um, the people who are masterful at things keep it really simple. And I think both Laird and I are really curious. We continue mm-hmm. to well, both want to learn. High exposure. But we're, I, we we're, have, we're fortunate that way. We, we get exposure. We have a lot of very smart people coming yeah, around. But right, the yeah. other part of that, at least that I've been seeing over and over, is that when you... That's me. I'm sorry, you guys. Oh, you're good. I don't know. I thought that was off. Oh, Amazing. when we do the podcast in my house, it's uh, trash trucks. Yeah. Sorry. My yeah. daughter sorry thinks that. that she's whispering. Mm. She just walks right up. I love that. Hey, you guys. <laughs> coasters are wet. That's what I she love told that. me yesterday. So good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Good Aww, job. They are. That's so good. <laughs> so hopefully they get the listeners like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my if daughter, they actually. Don't. But, but. Al- but also, there's that you, you, what I've been learning over and over, and you guys know, because you talk to people all the time, is every best person I know in their field of like, okay, let's put it in quotes, health and wellness, they're saying, let's take out the things that keep you from being successful. They're not adding more things right. in because yeah. people are already overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So I think for both of us, and we do it differently and in some ways similar, it's like, how do we get to the essential parts of what we're talking about? Keep it simple, but then keep an open mind to keep learning. So you get new input, um, but try not to get turned upside down or co- overcomplicated by the new input. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I feel like we're getting scienced out too. We're getting data overwhelmed with data, and I, I feel like I, I want to come from more experiential. Yeah. Like, tell me about what you've been doing mm-hmm. and how you've done it and what works for you. And it'll first of all, that'll be a simpler way, right? Because you're gonna just if you're doing it, it's probably pretty simple because mm-hmm. nothing we're doing is that complicated. And, and so, you know, let's, let's have it be more experiential. And I always like, uh, for me personally, I think just learn, like learning more with a, you know, it's like, why is the Bible full of parables? I mean, because we just can, we can apply those right. so easily. And so I think, I, I feel like we, we complicate it. We have so much to deal with and so many things we're trying to juggle at once just in this new, um, more convenient world. Mm. Um, it, it, it's nice to have things be more simplified, like yeah. just simple, hey, put this, drink that, do this. Do, I mean, just do some simple things that, that mm. can really have long-term benefits. And then what are those things that we can do that we can do and in, put into our lifestyle, like into our daily living? Mm-hmm. Like we, if it's too elaborate, how are you going to do it? Like right. if you have to go and, you know, catch the thing in some place and milk the cow at the noon moon at the thing. I mean, it's just like, you're going to lose me. We're just, we're not going to be able to pull it. So, uh, I like, like, let's make it, you know, applicable, mm-hmm. easy to do implement and show me some sort of experiential evidence. Like you've done it and it's been great for you. Cause that would be enough for me to at least try it. And right. it might not work for me cause we're all, we're all different. Mm-hmm. We have different needs and, and I mean, there's some things that we can all use that we all, we know in health and wellness, we know it's high, you got to be hydrated. We know we got to have good and good, solid food. You got to have good sleep. You need to have, you know, you got to have physical mo- I mean, you have certain baseline things that don't seem to be changing. Mm-hmm. Some of this other stuff, you know, oh, it used to be good in the morning, but now it's good at night and now it's not good at all. And, you know, it's, it's we, so those, there's things that change, but certain things seem to be that won't change. They're not, you know, gravity's gravity, right. water's water. <laughs> I mean, until that stuff is different, you know, and then we're going to be in a different planet and then it's the whole going to be And you can't hack your different way. Rules. You know, I right. think that's one thing we're in agreement on is like, we always say the hacks only work when you've done a lot of the right things Baseline. already and yeah. then, oh, maybe you get an extra 1% or 2% mm-hmm. with this hack, but it's never a substitution for work. Yeah. And a practice, yeah. because there's so much information out there now, and and so what happens is, is people I don't know what to do, and what I and they have so much knowledge, but they don't have a practice. Right. And so ultimately, I think the practice, the system mm. in place, is more important than I have all this data. It's like so okay, true. that's incredible, but what's your practice made up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and people are trying to hack their way around the work. So. They right. want to hack their way right around the work. Mm-hmm. Like, here's the work. Do the work. They want to just hack their way around the work and go just right to like, oh, let me just hack it and I don't need to work. Right. I'm like, yeah, it never works. Wrong universe. And, it's just and anything like, that you can get to with, via shortcut is probably not worth getting to. On top of yeah. that, you don't even get the fulfillment of the whole reason why, even if it, the work's right. not that great, yeah. the work itself will bring you some sort of feeling yeah. of, you know, joy or accomplishment yeah. or just yeah. make you tired. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> have you guys ever been to Yosemite? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Yosemite Point is one of my favorite hikes in the world. I go past Yosemite Falls, and uh, it's like eight miles, like vertical round trip. And we always call it because it's the view is great, but you could also get a similar view if you drive to Glacier Point. And I'm like, it's just the view's so much sweeter when you earn it. Yeah. I'm like that yeah. glacier doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta yeah. hike up the mountain for yeah. Yosemite Point. It's just so much more satisfying. And it's like the the growth of things. It's like. You can't cheat gravity, right? Like if you're trying to get to the top of something, there's a bunch of stairs. Like you can go around, you can sidestep. Like you have to use a certain amount of energy to get to that point and fight gravity. You can go around it or however you want. You're either gonna stay where you're at or you're gonna, you might as well just go straight. Yeah. Go straight through it. But I feel like the people- That's my philosophy. You and I see eye to eye. There we go. (laughs) The obstacles. Yeah, well, you literally go through things. No, well, you know what I mean. You know, you just said straight, like the shortest distance between two points. Yeah, and I feel like people when they dodge challenges and stuff, it's like that was your little boost of like to go forward. You know, you had to like use that, go through it, and boom, you got a little boost to go up the stairs to the next stair. But you dodged it, so now you're still on the same stair, kind of thing. Here at Sandcast, you know, we got to keep our minds, bodies on point all the time. So we like to start our days with a little AG1. A little water in there, give her a little spinneroo, and we're good to go. Multivitamins, all the goods your body can need, the greens, all in one. This is all you need, AG1. After we get our athletic greens, we're all energized to go practice with the only ball that we're ever gonna use, Wilson, baby. And after practice, obviously, I'm sweating a ton. I need to get rehydrated. The only way we're doing it at Sandcast is with Waikia Volcanic Water, with bottles made of 100% ocean plastic. So we're getting hydrated. We're saving the environment one bottle at a time, baby. Cheers. Guys, after a long day, you know, we're in the sun out there grinding and playing. We got the sunset going down, and we just need the perfect drink to take us into a nice evening of podcasting. And this is what we choose. Bartender in a box. My favorite flavor, the Mai Tai. But we also have margarita as an awesome choice. And, uh, you know, there's 12 drinks, 12 cocktails in just one tasty box. Comes with the spout on it as well. So, boom. Sit down at the beach. Take it on the go. 12 cocktails. Bartender in a box. It is the official beverage of the Sandcast Podcast. Well, and then it's going to come chase you too, because there's always a repercussion for not going up. Well, then so then it's going to start. Mind, chasing, right? Then you're going to be start pretty soon. You're going to be running down, yeah, and, thing, right. and life's going to be after you, like yeah. in a real way. It's like what did, there's a great quote, another great quote I thought of, which is uh, he, he talks about you're going to have to to sacrifice. So choose one. Mm. Otherwise, it'll be chosen for you. Right. So you get to choose it. Choose your whatever it is you're going to do. You choose right. it. So you get to decide what you what you're going to do, or it's going to be chosen for you, and then you're not going to you're not going to get to decide. And how much fun is that going to be? Because it might not be one that you want to yeah. do, but it's going to be like this is what you're doing. And then you're like, you know. So I feel like you guys embody that perfectly because like you guys have so much going. It's like oh my god, how do they manage all this? But then it's the most authentic things ever, like the XPT. At your house, the community of like high functioning, just smart, genuine individuals around you guys, the superfood, the surfing, the volleyball, like podcast, it's like all so authentic. So you guys just chose like, we're going to do challenging things, but things that I want to do and that are worth it for me. And then it just turned into like. Yeah, when I, I want to say thank you because that reminds me because sometimes when you're in it, you're not looking at it. So it's like it's it, I appreciate the, the fact that you're able Do you look and you go, yeah, OK, I can see that because sometimes when you're just in, in, you know, and and you can I mean, listen, it's because it doesn't end. So it's not like you can just show like you come one day and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you're like, OK, what about Monday? What about Tuesday? Yeah. What about Wednesday? <laughs> yeah. What about Thursday? What about next week? Mm-hmm. What about next month? What about next year? So it's so there is a certain thing with that, with that kind of volume that and that consistency that at times. 
<laughs> I knew. I knew. <laughs> Next. No, I just. It's, it's great. <laughs> outside people come into the house. <laughs> Larry, well, what's they say? An expert, somebody lives a mile away? Well, no, I, yeah, I don't say. I mean, I try not to say too much, but I just watch at times. I mean, that is the balance between the Laird and I is, uh, you know, Laird needs to be out in nature and doing things that are all consuming and he'll lay down wattage and output like nobody's business but he i think really resents feeling monotony and i do think and people can say whatever they want i think that is also a more masculine trait of like be careful uh, wanting to break <laughs> out of the monotonous grind, yes. which I think is also healthy because for, for me, it's a good reminder of like, wait a second, like Laird will ask me and we'll be in the car and he's like, I mean, is this what we're doing now? Is this what we're doing our whole life? We're just answering emails. Is that what we're doing? We're answering emails. You know, it's like, and I'm sitting there like, tr I'm different. trying to spin 50 plates and I'm like, I just, I'm trying to just keep it, you know, keep it all rolling. You know? go, to the, go to the ocean, Laird. <laughs> yeah. That, but it, it's not just go to the ocean, right? It's, it's a specific kind of ocean. And if mother nature is not providing those but then right. I'm reminded that that's also what makes Laird Laird, and I'm so grateful for that kind of, uh, not free spirit, but just that spirit of adventure or willingness to try things that don't seem um, feasible. It's also a reminder, but it is an interesting balance. Like you build these things, but to maintain them or the maintenance of them can also be a sentence. Mm -hmm. So you're, you mm -hmm. have to really mind. Totally. Um, Make sure you really like it and it's fun because the sentence will be a little easier like, I, wanted to, I wanted to build it and bail yeah. like, well like, yeah and, and that's the coast. thing and it's also re remembering it's like i somebody asked me this recently and i'm like when it gets crazy like think about it with your family i always say for women it's when we're standing over a dishwasher right you're mfing everybody in your family when you're standing over the dishwasher you're like this guy and that baby and this kid right. and you know like whatever and it's in that moment that you say to yourself yes and i chose this mm -hmm. right so it is an interesting balance mm -hmm. between having creative endeavors that take work but not but we are in some ways become prisoners to them and so it's a constant calibration of making sure you're paying attention to how deep are you getting in the lockdown and what do you need to do to also balance that out mm -hmm. you guys seem to have done a pretty remarkable job of it because when you start something new and yeah it's not it's novel and it's exciting and then like i'll use podcasting as an example mm -hmm. like there are millions and millions of podcasts and i think the average makes it to like six episodes. Mm. Like if you have more than 20 episodes on your podcast, you're in the top 1% wow. of podcasters because people just get sort of bored with it. And they're like, oh, this is actually way harder. Yeah. Way harder. <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens yeah. is yeah. people don't realize the difficulty. Mm -hmm. They just think, oh, yeah, I just get the thing and start talking and put yeah. it on the thing. And people are going to love it. It'll be right. great. You'll have followers. It's yeah. like... Mm, it's a little more intricate than that, especially if you're going to do what what Gabby does, where at the level of that saturation that you're going to go and read every single book back to front before you talk to every yeah. person, when you're going to go through that whole process every time and you're going to do that multiple times a week. Okay, uh, let's see what you got. I like, come on. It, but it's, but it, you know, I, always, it, it, I can say that about surfing. I can say that about volleyball. They only look at the moment. They look at the one place. They, they see the person on the top of Everest and they go, oh, Yeah. I, I want. I wish I had that. And they're not right. realizing. Well, they had to go. You know, vomit in base camp for two right. weeks first before right. you right. even got there. And I go and 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 I use. I can use myself personally. People look at with things that I've done, and I go, Yeah, you want to be me all the way until you're in the water and a and a eighty footer is going to land on your head. I go, everything up until, yeah. up until then is all yeah. great. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you want to be that. I want to be in that car and that, live religious. in that lifestyle and use that until that quick. thing. And then all of a sudden you're like <laughs> in the thing and you're like, hmm, I don't want to be here. Wait, it's, what's your line about intention? I always appreciate that, actually. Well, your intentions, like what, what your intentions will dictate how you respond in the moment of truth. Like why you're doing something will dictate how you respond when you're clamped. Right, like if right, you're right. when you're in that spot. You better love it. Like right. if I'm sitting in the in, in the water and a giant wave's about to land, oh, yeah. land on my head, I'm like, you know why I'm here? Because I love this. Yeah. This is I just love this. Yeah. This is great. And then you <laughs> and then probably you might have a chance to survive the punishment. Right. <laughs> but if you're there for any other reason, yeah. you're like, mommy, whatever, please get me out of <laughs> here right now. I, I'll never do this again. Like, so yeah. I, I do know. like to hear Laird and Lucas' conversations around wiping out. It's fascinating. Like. I bet. 
the, the skill, the thought pattern, what you're doing with your body, a new technique. Well, I figured if I did this, it was a little better. So you realize it's a different, it's a commitment. But I have a, I have a, theory, <laughs> but I have a, a, a theory about failure, too. I have a theory about failure and your skill to be able to, I call it the art of crashing, but it's really the ability to be able to, to, to how you, like, because it's, it's unrewarded. I call it the unre, unrewarded skill of wiping out, which is, where you can, you know, you can see an athlete do something and, and fall in a way that a civilian felt like that. They'd have a broken leg right, or yeah. a broken neck or a broken mm-hmm. something. Yeah. But you've learned how to do it in a way that you can get up and just keep doing what yeah. you're doing. And, and, and that art, it's unrewarded because you don't, there's no glory in it. It's not like they go, great job on that wipeout. <laughs> right. Great job on that crash. <laughs> yeah. you, know? you, you don't get any, yeah. any, 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 uh, you know, you don't get any joy for it, but you, the reward is that you get to continue to do it. Right. So you get the reward of that you can continue on. And I think there is a real skill in all this stuff that the skill of being able to do stuff, uh, that to do whatever it takes to accomplish these failures yeah. like, and, and be able to fail and then get up and be able to respond again. I think that there's a, I think there and within that is probably the greater skill actually than, than, than the skill of the success. The skill of the success, you're rewarded by success, right. but the failure isn't, it doesn't have like a negative impact like injury or dismembership, yeah. you know, being. Kind of shows you more of that, like what you're saying, like a disastrous situation can show that real yeah. person inside you. The failures can show you that. Exactly. Same, right? Exactly. Or but you need to be able to be physically have some stuff. To, you have to have some skill to be able right, to come yeah. down right, land right, dive right, yeah. fall right, and do that. And so just get back up and be continuing on. And, and that's, but it's not like a skill where everybody goes, well, that was amazing how you yeah. missed, how you fell on your face and got back up and still got the ball. It yeah. was more like, it was amazing how you hit the ball straight down. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you don't, so the 100%. reward is not on the side of that. You know, a basketball guy runs down and dives in the chairs and then comes back out and runs back down. Yeah. Somebody else diving in the chairs, they'd be probably pretty messed right. up. Like he just, sure. so there's a, there's a weird, there's, I was watching one of those compilations of like, whatever people wiping out mm. slams or something the other day. Oh, yeah. And I was just thinking in my head, like, which one of these would I choose to do? <laughs> and then it was a surfer going over the falls, like, I don't know, 10, 15 foot wave. Uh, yeah. But I was like, that surfer. It was nothing. He just popped up and went back out. Like, I would for sure choose that. Granted, like, that's out of my size range, but, like, yeah, that's nothing for that guy. Yeah. Like, these other people are getting seriously hurt, like, almost dying. It was, like, that kind of YouTube video. Yeah. But that guy was, like, easy. Like, he just... I mean... I know that that guy was fine. And yeah. It was, like, routine for him. Yeah. But if you took a civilian and put him in the lip of 15... I'd be like, oh, God. You'd probably I be hauling him away. Die. You can just see that. You'd yeah. see that you'd be hauling him away. But it is an interesting dynamic how that how we have these skills that allow us to make to make these mistakes. But and I connect that to this other thing I think that happens uh, too, which is that we hardly ever remember uh, what we did when we succeed, but we always remember what we did when we fail. And so you look back and you have, they go oh, play that tape back, like in your brain, like what, mm-hmm. what I did. And you can play the tape back of your failures very well, very perfect. The, oh, but, yeah. the, but the successes, you don't, because I, I have a theory about that your brain is satisfied that you know how to do that. You did it right, so you know how to do it. So I don't need yeah, to. Yeah, I don't need. To, I don't need to make any memories for you to re- pull from to huh. not do that again. Yeah. But when you make a mistake, you remember that very well because the body's like, hmm, we don't want to do that again. Yeah. So let's make sure we analyze that and have that available so we can not experience that again. It's it, it, it's interesting because you, you get the question, oh, how was that experience, or what did that feel like, and this and that, and you look back and you're like, oh, I don't really even remember that. Mm-hmm. But then when you, you remember every single failure you ever have. Like, I can tell you oh, what, yeah. you probably remember your losses mm-hmm. a lot better than you remember you your just, victories. You just like, replayed, like, four plays from Manhattan this weekend in my head. <laughs> Travis sorry. getting flashbacks. Like, Travis knows. <laughs> sorry. He, he can see it, too. Sorry. Right? sorry. Yeah. But, no, it's but, all good. But, but, but I'm saying, but we do that. There's a reason why we do that, and that's so that we have the, the so that we have that in store to access so we don't let that happen in the yeah. future. Like, if you succeed, if you, if you do everything right, the body's like, oh, I know what to do. I already know. I know yeah. what to do. I did everything right, mm-hmm. so I know what to do. So I don't need to. I don't need that. I don't need that information. Yeah. And with, I mean, I think the brain. I agree 100 percent that we're wired like that. We remember our losses. We remember, for example, like a fall. Like when you go down on like a 50 foot wave. Like we were talking about in the sauna, and like wave snapped, and you're like, I need to go back out there. Mm-hmm. But everything in your brain was probably like, No, we don't. We can just 
stay in your like, collarbone. Yeah. Did you say your collarbone snapped? Yeah, I had a cra- yeah. Like, how do you reverse what's going on in your brain? Be like, no, no, no. Like, we're going back out there. I think you get good at ignoring that voice. Yeah. I think you get good at. I think you train yourself to just <laughs> ignore that voice. That yeah. that. Oh yeah, no, no. Just stop it. I don't. I don't. You know, because that thing's there all the time. Mm-hmm. And so when you have enough, I think when you have enough experience with that voice and then you have enough experience ignoring that voice then you get better and it's like i think the pool helps you train that you know yeah. if you you do the first time you go hey you know i gotta go up gotta go up gotta go up oh, oh, oh and then you fall in, then you're really you feel bad about it like mm-hmm. you said oh yeah i feel i don't want that to happen again and then the next time you go oh here's that voice and you just ah and you go through it and then you're like so the next time you go through it the next time you go through it pretty soon you're going through it pretty consistently pretty soon you're just able to be like yeah right it's you again don't do that to me mm-hmm. um and then maybe the voice moves a little further down the line and now you're a little more squeezed and so it comes a little sooner and then you play the game again and eventually you get to the point where I think you have to be reasonable like you actually better come up because you're probably going to black out Mm -hmm. right so you know that's but I think there's a that's a I think that that comes from that relationship with that voice and then the ability to kind of practicing overriding it you know just pushing that Mm -hmm. and being like oh yeah I'm not going to listen listen to you like I I, Mm -hmm. you know I, I was I was I felt bad the last time I listened to you and I came yeah. up early I'm not going to do that again so I think there's something to do with mm-hmm. having that having a relationship and pushing it and I love what you said about sort of the psychology of ending on a win or more positive result because yeah. mm-hmm. I mean yeah. we had Kent on your podcast together and he's all about the psychology of winning he's read all these research studies and when they research uh, rams like it will literally like affect the like psychology going mm-hmm. on in their brains where if, if the ram loses it's going to lose again and again like but the if ram the ram wins win. yeah yeah and but the winning ram like will just continue to win because it's just like your brain's just like wired to keep on winning right and same yeah. thing they've done like all sorts of studies so like to end on a win is yeah. it's so powerful yeah oh yeah well they, because then you don't have that doubt in there mm-hmm. that can grow like it's like a seed right so that thing and then if you're hurt severely you're gonna have plenty of time to let the seed grow because you're gonna all you're gonna be doing is sitting around thinking about it and like oh I don't know I'm gonna be able to do this right. kind of get a thing while I be on shape or the thing right. it's all that stuff that, that that little voice at you. chirps at you that yeah. whole time and if so if you can just finish on hey I can do it even broken like I can still just do it right. then you come back in you're like well I can do it even broken so imagine how good <laughs> I'm gonna be when I heal yeah. so mm-hmm. so I think that's a big piece that's why I mean that's why they have that whole saying you know get back on the horse right yeah, yeah, yeah. like you fall off you get back on the thing not no i don't want to ride i'll wait because that thing just grows right. and turns into a, a monstrous thing that you might not be able to get over mm-hmm. yeah. you might not get over that thing and then your line of work that's like months or years yeah. right like yeah. your story when you're hurt guys yeah. are like or people retire yeah or you're just yeah. like you're just never the same like, i yeah. can't commit the to the same level right unless well, they just you, got over yeah it well you could over. have an act you could have a wreck that's why I was always, when I see people that are a little careless, and, and then I, I always think, you know, you, you, you could have, and I may, maybe I've had a few that, you know, kind of changed your, you know, changed your, your barometer, but I would think that you could, you could, you know, you can uh, have, have, have one that you never get over. Mm. You could, you could have a wreck that you're just not, you're not, like you could, and it could be just because you, you pushed it unnecessarily yeah. you're just being careless you right. just did a few little things careless and you did one you get one that you might like psychologically you just might not get over and i and i've had it i know friends that have had it and yeah. and i've seen it uh happen i think i've had a more difficult time that having that happen because i've had so many along the way that i think i've kind of gotten you know over one and then you get to the next one you get over one so as they go you don't just go from none to like you know when you see an athlete you'll hear an athlete never have been getting hurt in their career then they get hurt and all of a sudden it's like game ending i mean it's like career ending because they never got hurt and Mm -hmm. so they so the the they were so vulnerable to that injury because they had never gone through hey i'm hurt okay i'm a little better hey i'm back Mm -hmm. maybe stronger okay now i'm hurt now i'm better now i'm getting better oh being hurt to that extent not what I thought it was. Exactly. I learned that in a huge way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In terms of, well, usually like throwing out my back kind of thing. Where I've, first time I was like, bro, I can't walk. Calling my trainer. I can't walk. Like, I can't play. We're in Russia. Literally like, oh. just like barely walking. He's like, Shh, just shut up and do what I say. I was like, <laughs> okay, but I can't play. And then end up finding a way to play and kind of loosened into it and got like a good top 10 finish. I was like, 
whoa, that's possible. And then I've done it two or three times since then. Had a good friend not go through all these things and pull himself out of a really big event. And I'm just like, wow, like my experience, if I was in that situation, I would have been able to get through it because I had been through it mm -hmm. two or three times before. But if it was just me alone in that younger state of mind, boom, I would have pulled myself out as well. And I just saw the different mindset and I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, that's crazy. But, yeah. but also don't you think, at least from my observation, is you would call it too though. That's a difference. Like you've had all these little instances, but if you went out on a day that it was truly a no-go, you would not go. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think connected yeah. to that is also because like you can talk to other no to not push mountain it. climbers or people where uh, like uh, remember yeah. Jeremy Jones, he's yeah. like, if on the day, even if we've planned for a month, there's a four foot space that feels unsafe at that day to cross. Mm -hmm. If when I call on the radio and the person on the other side isn't like, OK, I will never work with them again. So I think the other part of that is people who are willing to say not today. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Make the call. Make, yeah, make yeah, the yeah. call. Yeah. Make the call of like, mm, you know what? It's a no go. Yeah. We'll have another chance, but we're not going to. So that's mm -hmm. connected. Yeah. To that. Yeah. Yeah. I well, that's connected to the I'm broken, but I'm still going to go. Yeah. Well, so because those are those are actually those are part of each other. Right. Yeah. Making the call, knowing having the because each one takes a certain amount of courage. Yeah. One of them is the courage to not go. Yeah. Because that would be like, hey, take some courage to go. Hey, you know what? I just don't. I'm. I'm, things don't feel right. right I'm not right, going right. to go. It's the same kind of courage it takes. You know what? I'm hurt, and I'm not feeling that great, but I'm going. Right, right, so right. I think both it's of those take huh? this, the courage on the, on, the, on the both sides of it. They're similar somehow. That was a, we, we had, me and Delaney, a very good moment in our marriage when <laughs> we were hiking up Half Dome. And at the time, I don't know, have you guys done Half Dome before? Mm -mm. But the, so the cables were down, but you could still like pick them up and just start pulling yourself up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we got probably a quarter of the way up. And I was like, Delaney, like, if I slip, I'm falling backwards, taking you down, and then we're falling off a mountain. So like, maybe we should just yeah. call this one. And she was like, that makes me feel so much better that you have a barometer of like, maybe this is a little right. too much. Yeah. And she's Seriously? like, now I'm way more comfortable like, with, you. Stuff with you. With yeah. you. Yeah. We used to, tell, we used to yeah. tell our kids that. I used to say, listen. We okay, to, you can be alone with the kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, for all. We used to tell But only for that. an hour. <laughs> we, we used to tell the girls, because Laird would put our one, our middle daughter was on a jet ski full throttle at three years old. No joke. Can't even touch the gunnel. Can't touch the bottom. And she's yeah. fully floating, going, f hauling ass. But we used to tell the girls, if you are really smart, then you can do dangerous things. Mm -hmm. If you're stupid, you can't. Mm. If you're well, you can't do them very long well if you're right. not intelligent. Right. I mean, right. if you're smart, you can do dangerous things a long yeah. time. And, it was just and many of them, them. Like when to, you know, there's calculation on things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have to put, have you ever like had to put a governor on Laird and like, is this a little big today? Oh, I don't get involved <laughs> with Laird's relationship with his with surfing. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, she will, you will. I don't put a barometer though. No. I saw, okay, no, but so you maybe will, on four but events. But because a, a woman's intuition is a real thing. So if a woman yeah. gets a little thing like, hey, you know what? I don't know. Something just feels wrong about you on this bus ride right now. Yeah, and I've you had might not want to get on the bus. Yeah. Yeah. You might not want to get yeah, on the yeah. bus. But I've done so, that maybe so that is, three or four times while he's gone out surfing. I'm like, hey, just be a little extra. Like, I'll wake up and they're always gone because yeah. they're gone so early. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, of course, I always get Laird. For, he's just about to get on the ski. They're just putting their phones in their bags. And, like, they'll put a phone but in a wet bag and, right, like, it yeah. goes in the... And so I'll just say, hey, I, I have a really strong feeling. But that's happened literally like three or four times. Yeah. So. And then we'll be on high alert. Then it'll be like extra caution. Yeah. Add extra caution just because, just because that's a real power. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a real, they, you know, that's a real like superpower that you you gotta. And it isn't always to maybe with him. You don't want to not listen to it with <laughs> someone in his crew or something. Like it's right. something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like Luke is like basically a member of the family now. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> like and the thing and the there. thing is, is that Laird, you know, with Luca, for example, um, you know, Laird feels that Luca makes good decisions in the moment that he naturally has that. Yep. I'm not talking about on land. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not your face. That takes a lot longer to develop. 
the land part. <laughs> yeah, but that he, his innate ability to are a little more gray. make good decisions. So I, I really appreciate having somebody that I know will have Laird's back because that's the whole thing, right, is you want that person or persons mm-hmm. who are around each each, all of you. I mean, I know Laird is going to look out for them. Mm-hmm. I right. just need to make sure someone's looking out for Laird. Right. right. And so before, in the early days, it was like Dave Kalama and, and uh, Derek Doner, and, and then it became, on some level, Terry and, and uh, you know, Benny or and yeah. Luca. So it's nice when you have guys that you're like, <coughs> I have trust. the confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Having the trust is a big, that's a big factor. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a. I mean, listen. You don't get you. You're not. But you're going to have it in this sport too. The problem. The problem is you don't find out as quickly. sometimes as quickly. Because yeah. if you did, you'd really end up probably finding guys that really you could really. I mean, at the end, you're going to find it anyway, and you're going to end up with somebody that has that kind of, you know. But we have that kind. Of, we have that. It, well, in dangerous environments, it's all accelerated. So military, yeah. you know, yeah. firemen, mm-hmm. yeah. big wave surfing. So if you ever need it, you know, new partners, you just bring them here. We'll yeah. train for like thirty minutes, and you'll know right away. <coughs> you know, do they? Yeah. Do that they know be how like to? The initiation. I'm sure, Brock came up here first. Yeah. No, you can really, <laughs> you can really see. You can. You can see so much. You can about oh, for people. sure. Well, you took uh, you took came. Oh yeah, surfing. For, yeah, okay. Now, <laughs> you took came falling came. for a little while. But surfing's while. different. It came out to surfing's Hawaii. hard. Yeah, and I mean, it was very small. Yeah. He's Canadian, so. <laughs> but he he was definitely not scared out. It was like Hawaii life, where it was like, okay, we're gonna work out in the morning, then we're gonna train, then we're gonna check out this hike, and then we're gonna go surf. It was like yeah. the fourth workout oh, yeah, of the day. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Dude, you just gotta get up on a set. I'll take you out. I had him on the inside too, and then of course the set comes and just closes out everywhere. Uh-huh. I'm like, so we're just gonna have to take this on the head. And just, <laughs> you'll be fine. And he just he's like, okay, sounds good. And, but then he like disappears under and you can see his hands. Oh no! Like, Aren't you gonna like? Yeah. He wasn't freaking out though. He was just yeah. like not coming up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm a few seconds away from grabbing you, freaking out. Yeah. 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 I was like, why are you so relaxed though? Yeah. So, well, that's kind of great. It was good. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't panic at all. He was just like, yeah. whoa. Also, he didn't. Well, the, the thing is, is it, you can't teach that. <laughs> You can teach him how to come up. So you, that's the thing about an attribute, right? Can't you teach can't, him not to panic. You, you can't right. teach him not, but you can definitely teach him how to use his arms to right. get his head yeah. above water. Yeah. You can be like, go like this, and then your head will be out, like, and you can you, breathe. Are you doing it's that cool. on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe, I think that's a decent sign. Yeah. 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 Sure. That's a good sign. Okay. Now you just need to make sure he knows what to do. Let's just get him in the now pool. he's got the right attitude. You know, hey, cool, he's going to be cool in the, in, yeah. in the, in the storm. Right. He's going to be cool in the storm. Now we just need to make sure he can actually do do what he needs to do. Yes. Okay. We'll do we'll bring, we'll bring, these are the Laird athletes. So we'll bring them up. Yeah. We were talking about the 84 Olympic Guilty team. by association. Yeah. Yes. And sure. they did something similar where they had, I think they were down to like 15 guys, had to whittle it down to 12. Mm. And so Doug Bill takes them on this, gosh, I forget what it's called, like some kind of outdoor expedition, like okay. a month-long backpacking thing in like Whoa. Idaho. Yeah. That's and a we're talking like Southern California guys who are like, snow? Yeah. No way. And so he was like, made it pretty easy to figure out who we wanted who on the team know. and who we didn't. That's a good point. <laughs> and Genius. the players to this day are like, no, wasn't useful. And Doug Beal's like, that was a game changer. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> they tested him. They're like, we're yeah. cooking meals. Like, we're sleeping in the snow. Like, mm-hmm. that's the way it's going to go. And they hated it. But Doug was like, that was a pretty good test. And we won a gold medal. And then we yeah. won another gold medal. And then we won one more gold medal for good measure. <laughs> yeah. That makes it clear. <laughs> Like I said, I, that's that's the kind of test I like. It's like, well, they're thinking, what does it have to do with the game? And you're thinking it has everything to do with the game. Like mm-hmm. it's like that's the whole. How are you looking at? Like what do you what do you see? Right? Yeah, I mean, it's a good leader, right? Or a good coach? Exactly. Yeah, sure. Well, he like, sees the he sees it, right? Yes. Everybody's in their their silos, but he sees the overview, and he's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, let me see how this let me see how this platoon responds right. when they're. Make you know, because you're going to be squeezed. Together. You're going to be squeezed, and if you're going to have any inner, inner squadron squabble, this you're going to know who the guys are, and you're yeah. going to be all that stuff's going to come out quick. Yeah. You're, at least yeah. you can identify and be like, okay, cool. I can't let you by him, and you by him, and this could be well, the guy I got to push on and yeah. the thing, and who I can't push on. Yeah. So, and you see that even in business when it's going well oh, or not yeah, going sure. well. Yeah. Who cries and Who's squawks and who blames yeah. and yeah. who does yeah. whatever? You're like, oh, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Like, have you, yeah. do you see a lot of parallels? And now that you guys 100%. are deep into the business world, from yeah, I mean, team sports. Oh yeah, obviously volleyball. Oh no, it's a hundred percent, and it's 
it's uh, it's like people who come in going, okay, we're going to solve problems. But what's interesting is Laird said the word attributes. It's funny. You need all these different types of attributes to actually make it really work. Mm. And they're sometimes better or worse in different situations, but it's riding that out because that attribute in that person is important for something else. It's just maybe bumpy to deal with in this environment. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see who, who will continue to go up the hill and who's like, I got to go. If the schlag gets too heavy and hard, who yeah. who splits? Right. Um, it's all it's yeah. all really. Well, you need part certain of it. kinds of people in certain situations. Yeah. It's like the the artists are always going to be more sensitive. That's just the you know the yeah. accountants are going to be more ruthless. Huh. Yeah, they you are. Know? I mean, you're yeah. just gonna. There's just certain yeah. things that. Yeah. It's gonna be like, like so. The, the creative people are gonna data. be more artists, and you got to be okay. And then the yeah. and the number guys are gonna be more like, okay, you're fired. You're okay. You're you're doing your job. You're not yeah. working. You know, they're gonna yeah. be everything's gonna be yeah. everything's gonna be more cut and dry for them. Like, so everybody's gonna have their own yeah. their own. So we uh, try to fill the cracks and gaps a little, and yeah, you know, if somebody needs to, well, vent. let people and also let people do their thing. Yeah. Like, oh, you're this is what you do. Do it. Yeah. And if you can't do it, okay, well, you couldn't do it. Right. But there wasn't because you did something, either stop them yeah. from doing it or or, or help them do it. They either, so part of some of it, I think, for us, at least for, I feel like there's a certain level that you have to allow to. It's like a little bit like if you're not going to do it yourself, then you're going to have to allow somebody else to sure. do it maybe in a way that's not reflective of you. Right. I mean, except when it comes to your representation, like yeah. people that are representing you have to conduct themselves in s something parallel you to, want, you, yeah. to you. Right. I mean, that's kind of why most of, you know, w Gabby's taken most of it on her, you know, we've taken it on our own hands to represent ourselves because yeah. we don't, we can't have people. Yeah. How many people, you know do what I mean? Have, like work. Cause then I have multiple businesses. Like, is there a crossover between Laird Apparel and no, and these are separate businesses, they're but, each is separate, but they all know three? each is other. That, yeah. yeah. Three? three. Yeah. They yeah. all know each other. And you know, the hope is when you can amplify something that would benefit both of them or all yeah, three right. of them, yeah. you're always gunning towards that. But these are, I mean, these are separately run. They take a lot of energy businesses that need different manpower. Yeah. yeah. And you want to make them be as close together as, as hard, you know, because yeah. you, you can piggyback from one another. Yeah. So there's obviously some, some, but you have to have people willing to do that. And you have, yes. to, you have to have people and also help them understand that it is beneficial. Like that, you know, the, the, the tide raises all the boats. Right. Cause right. you might so, have an entrepreneurial mindset in one group and then you might have more of a VC on, you know, mindset in another group and right. they're interested in metrics and returns and all of that. And the entrepreneur is sort of has a very different approach. And so it's really learning all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh kind of reminds me like this, I think it was Jim Collins who wrote good to great. Mm -hmm. I when don't it, remember the, who was, the author he's was. He's like, you have to get the wrong people off the bus and the right people on the bus and the right people in the right seats on the bus. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing. Like trying to like Sandcast is a really small operation. Yeah. But like, we've tried to put the right people on the bus a couple of times. We're like, that's just the wrong person. Like it's so hard to find like the right person and get them in the right seat for their yeah. job. Seriously. Which are like starting businesses. You guys have probably experienced it. Oh quite yeah. A bit. Oh oh yeah. yeah. And you, that's why when the right person is sitting in the right seat, mm -hmm. you are make sure that they feel that they know that they're really appreciated. You cheer. And uh, yeah, right. you know, <laughs> freedom. You cheer, no, but you got to cheer them on. You know, you it's gotta, a real thing because yeah. it's more uncommon than common. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so when yeah. you recognize, like when your flight leaves on time and lands early, it's important to go. We landed early. That's mm -hmm. unusual. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's when you have the right person sitting in the right seat, just letting them know that they're really valued and also continuing to instill the confidence in them to trust themselves to do it because they're going to do it better than you can, mm -hmm. whatever that qualification is. There's and so I, many parallels there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why a lot of athletes can go into business if, if you know, if they desire to. Yeah. And I mean, you, you have to have a desire, of course, yes. but they can't, that you can. I mean, all these, are, there's just all these metaphors. I mean, all the work, the success, the failure, the whole not be discouraged, but you know, when things aren't, cause you've been there, you're like, Hey, I've been at the bottom of the ocean. It's cool. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not <laughs> worth, I mean, down there, you can't even breathe. At least here you're breathing. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you kind of know those things. So you're like, Oh, and then people are so surprised. Like, Oh, you're really bummed out and disappointed. Not really. 
I mean, I'm just, it's just a, this is just a time when I'm doing this thing. And yeah. uh, there's going to be another time when I'm doing the other thing, which right. is going to be like, aren't you so amazed? And I'm, yeah, I'm amazed. It's great. But, but I also know that there's that other, you right. know, there's part of yeah. times in business where you're riding the wave and dropping in and just, oh yeah. The wave and, yeah. and then times of business where Donuts. you're underwater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Press at the bottom. Oh, is this the bottom? Yeah. Like, Maybe was, actually the bottom's, bottom's a little the further top. down than I thought. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> or, you, or you swim and then you run into the bottom. You're like, oh, that's the wrong direction. Better go the other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Just swim 15 feet <laughs> further. There's always yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You did all that wrong. I've never done that, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Swimming the wrong Small direction scale. is Small that's scale. a bad. That's a sign that you're <laughs> so highly <true>. disoriented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you swim into the bottom, which would mean you probably were struck in the head hard. Right. To get... You know, what well, is and dark like, down now, there, though? Yeah. Now I don't know if I can trust myself. Where, yeah. Which way should I go? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I don't know. But. I didn't realize there was a reef in the sky. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must be in a cave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in terms of bringing just the right people around, like, I mean, we spoke about cliches earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm just such a believer in the cliche that you're just, you're a product of the five people you surround yourselves with. Yeah. And you guys have done, it, like, you've, brought together this like gravity where you like bring in so many high caliber people where you get to learn so much from. And I think it's, it, I was talking to try about this earlier that like, like Christian McCaffrey came mm -hmm. and he has the best resources in the world, but he came to you guys. He's like, I'm kind of broken right now, like physically. And he's like, you guys can help me. And I'm sure that you guys probably learned a lot from Christian and whoever else comes through the house. It's just so cool that like, like you've, create this like magnetism where they're like, this is just the spot that we need to be. I think it just speaks to, like the high caliber people that you guys are. Well, thank you. I, I think it's, you know, you, you're trying to show up every day and mm -hmm. do your best. And I think both Laird and I are committed students also. I don't think we really feel that we know too much. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, certainly certain practices get better where you you can trust yourself and you go, oh, I, I, this feels good. And when someone's teaching us or speaking, you, you're you like, yeah, this is moving in the direction that makes sense to me intuitively. Um, but I, I also think that there's an interesting part, though, where you can't sort of say, oh, yeah, we're, we have this space or place. Because if you stop doing the things, um, then you lose the actual energy. Right. That's of creating the doing. that. That's so creating you kind that. of are grinding out all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's an interesting thing. Maybe you look up once in a while and you kind of will be in a room with a group of people and you think, man, we are really fortunate to be with these people. And then you kind of get back to work. Yeah. Because yeah. I think the hope is now we're not going to sit here and be like, you know, and sit here and talk about well, it. Well, then you <laughs> just in that moment, you're you, just lo mm -hmm. you just didn't learn something that was actually going to lift you up to the next yeah. thing. And, and I think uh, to add to that too is that the... You know, and I said that to these to these guys today about it. I just I, I feel like a big piece of of having these talented guy people that come and and they, and do this stuff is is that we get to see mm -hmm. if the things that we believe work work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I get if I'm mm -hmm. able to get a, like Christian or our our top athlete to come and 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 experience what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And they benefit from them, and I get to see them benefit from them. Then I'm like, hmm, yeah. I thought that was what it was. And so that just gives you some confirmation on the things that you're in the direction that you're going. Plus, it's our responsibility. Yeah. We're older athletes, and if we can help anyone. Well, that's aloha, too. That's aloha like, is that's to be shared. We to should share. be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's our responsibility because we've yeah. been given, you know, years ago we bought this house, like years ago, 97, and it's a boat ramp. And I used to think, it's the only boat ramp on the river. And I, I thought, wow, I don't know why we got to get this piece of property. Mm -hmm. And then when the floods happened, and I watched, and Laird and other people, like Kaimi and other people, mobilized to be helpful, I thought, oh, because Laird's a good steward. Mm -hmm. And so I just think, really, ultimately, you got to be a good steward. And so if we got put together, and then on top of it, we fell on this training, it's like, we're just being good stewards, mm -hmm. you know? And that... Yeah. That attracts people when it's because it's genuine. Yeah. And I think being genuine attracts that. Yeah, it's like there's a when you come in here, there's like an energy and a culture to it of like, like egos don't come in, like leave them, leave them on the road out there. Oh, egos yeah. get dropped in the like, water yeah. pretty fast. I, I give them to Gabby. When yeah, they come puffy chest, if I get a puffy chest, I'll be like, hey, babe, can you help me? This, 
This guy needs some help, hitter. and then you see the guy in the deep end looking at like this face on his look. It's like, oh my god, what do you do? Like, what's she gonna do to me? I'm drowning, <laughs> you know. So it's I just get because then they drop their guard too. They go, it's, but it's yeah, no ego. Community feel yeah. though. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's like but that's go the, on retreats to like find that yeah, feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you guys kind of created it up here. Well, it's we always tell awesome. people like it takes that's a little extra one. effort. Yeah, you have to put effort. But the return, selfishly, is so magical and, and inspiring. I'm re, re-inspired when I see... Like today, you, you were very clear, like, hey, I'm not feeling my best, mm-hmm. but you're out here doing it. Yeah. And to see another athlete, couldn't do it, can do it. I think that invigorates both of us because it's so exciting to watch people put it out there, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, you know, you give the world what it needs and it give you what what you want yeah it's all selfish don't kid yourself we're not being nice <laughs> the selfish act of giving yeah yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, that yeah. episode selfish of friends do you yeah. ever watch that do you ever watch friends yeah when that episode where phoebe's convincing joey that there's no such thing as a selfless act yeah and he goes and tries to help people and she's like well how do you feel after he's like i feel great she's yeah like, see i was selfish <laughs> i think about yeah. that all the time it's true though and that's the thing it's important for us both it's like yeah yeah but also we've been really really blessed and we're aware of it hopefully we're smart enough and we're just gonna be good students Stewart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When and, and like Gabby said before, you know, we have a, a responsibility and obligation that the things that we've been able to learn, mm-hmm. we we're obligated to share those with people as well because they were shared with us. That's right. So mm-hmm. we didn't just strum this stuff out of outer space. So we we, we have that responsibility to pass it along, and uh, and that and that's I mean, you know, they, they say that the Adlerian philosophy, the only way to true fulfillment is to be of service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so for us, like this is our form of being of service, right. right? We, I mean, it just happens to be that we get to do it with people that are shiny people. So it seems like it, but right, it's still right, right. not really any different than your, you know, you have a kitchen and you're feeding mm-hmm. homeless people or something, but we just, we are things a little more glamorous. Than, yeah. than what very glamorous. It's, it's very glamorous. Very so glamorous. we have very glamorous people. Totally. And so, so you, but that's why they want to come here, right? Those people are attracted to here because they, they're not glamorous anymore. No one cares about yeah. who they are or what they are. Like, well, well, and it feels yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think. think there's that. I think there is something that. I mean, first of all, the, what you said earlier about community. I think that's the underlying invisible thing that's mm-hmm. probably the most important thing, mm-hmm. which is that it is really about community and that you can come and you can see all different walks of life, all mm-hmm. different levels, all different skills, mm-hmm. all different thing, and that we're just all in it. Yeah. We're just all in it. And, yeah. you know, some t- high-level athlete can look over and they can see, you know, Kelly Meyer, our, you know, f- neighbor from down the street right. doing some radical exercise yeah, yeah, and yeah, sitting yeah. in the ice tub <laughs> for five minutes. Yeah. And they can be like, man, I'm I'm one of the best at what I do. And I got this lady showing me up, <laughs> right. you know. Yeah. So they can, it just keeps everybody kind of in check. The yeah. water has a tendency to do that. Yeah. We're kind of all and, – and, and, the, and the difference between – good great and greater or greatest is not that it's kind of blurred a little bit right, there's yeah. a blur to it it's yeah. not so you know it's not a thing where we're jumping out of the pool marking a thing and you know somebody's lines way up there and you're down at the bottom you can barely get off the ground yeah. this thing's a little more mm-hmm. uh ambiguous that yeah. way which is which is kind of grounding i think that puts us all yeah. in a really good it just puts us in a a better state of mind because it puts us in a position that we we feel a certain uh you know, equality mm-hmm. that we're both, we're kind of, what do we say? We're all equal before a wave, you know, right, like, yeah, right. like, <laughs> yeah, like you can go down there. I don't care who you are. I don't care what, you know, you can be the emperor of the world or right. you can just be some peasant. When the wave comes and slaps your face on the sand, it's doing the same thing to everybody. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's kind of like that. This, I think, I think that is a metaphor, but for this is, seems to be something very similar. It's a very similar experience. And the, and the reminder too, like you guys have really young families. People think, oh, of service. It's like right now you maybe you're able to just be of service to your family. Yeah. And that's being of service. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah, that has exactly. a million different ways yeah, of exactly. showing up. Cause people well, mom, like, you know. women naturally have to be of service. They are built with that. Right. We, we have a more difficult time. Mm-hmm. So males have a, 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 men have a more difficult time to be of service. Women are automatically be of service as soon as they're a mom. They're never going to be more in a service or they're going to be mothering us. Like yeah. they're I don't gonna, mother they're, you. I'm not here to mother you. <laughs> I know, but you are a service. Yeah, but I'm not yeah, here yeah. to mother you. No, I know. That, I already made, had I already made had a that mom. very clear. I had a mom. Yeah, don't yeah. try to pretend <laughs> like she, I mother you I had or that mom, you but, allow that. But I'm a service. <laughs> that's actually really funny. You think that small uh, or that community feel you guys created comes from maybe 
growing up on being Islanders, like from that small town, because that it comes up a lot with me when I'm like thinking about living in LA, and I don't know, I'm kind of negative about it. Like I, I forget how great it is, you know. When you're from Hawaii, it's yeah. hard. Like everything. Well, sucks. everything in the world. You have exactly. the benchmark. You got two higher bar. I know I'm so negative. Yeah, <laughs> especially the more you travel, you're like, there's yeah. literally nothing better. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, where's the sense of community? Like the neighbors and like the. I don't know that that energy but that's on you to create it yes and some people will go to it and then the ones who won't they just save you time Mm -hmm. and that's the whole thing and and it can start with okay you guys have a community Mm -hmm. it can start with a simple way that you act you can generate that and show and Mm -hmm. teach other people yeah Um, because if we have to rely on other people to create it for us I think we'd be waiting yeah 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 yeah. no 100% when you start with your family and then you start with your immediate neighbor down the friend yeah. or whatever yeah. who's in the immediate thing. And then you start yeah. bringing the ohana, you yeah. know, feed them, whatever, yeah. you know, whatever, however that, however that, you know, yeah. however that grows. And then it can expand. I mean, ours is just growing out from that to, you yeah. know, out to the front yard. And then you try to grow it out into the world from there. Yeah, but you sure. start at your house yeah. in your four walls. Then you go from your four walls to your yard. Then yeah. you go from your yard to your neighborhood and you go out from there. Yeah, and I have it more than I realize. Then I give myself I'd credit say. for you. Well, know, especially living in, in the South Bay and volleyball. Is like yeah, but you're Travis in pursuit Watson right now. And, it's hard. Yeah. You're you're in the pursuit of excellence mm. and maintaining a family and a mm. relationship. So not much time maybe else. At this time barely in your enough. life for you, right? Not that, barely, that barely time enough. Time yeah. to go surf. Like I haven't put my fins back on my board since yeah. I was in Hawaii. But there'll be I'm a time like, for that. That's. Like there's dust on it. Like that's weird. <laughs> yeah, but you're in pursuit. Yeah. Exactly. And when yeah. you're done with that pursuit. That's what my wife reminds me it's of. It's like, well. you know, we, we can't, you know, it's like with women and we always say, oh, you, you can't have everything. Well, actually, you kind of can. You just can't have it all at the same time. Mm. Yeah. And so we just have to know. It's like when a girl's pregnant. It's like, okay, but right now you're pregnant and you'll have a baby and then you will get back in shape. Right. Oh, I'm not sleeping. I have a new baby. Yep. And you will sleep. Yeah. So it's just being clear about, oh, I'm in this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. Gabby always says something that I really appreciate, which is I get to. Mm-hmm. I get to. I get to go train. I get to play volleyball. I get to be the, a dad. I get to be a, you know, yep. a husband. I get to be a lover. I get to be. I get to be. I get to be. Just a reframe. I, yeah, reframe. Mm. Let's yeah, reframe I get to this go stuff. to a meeting. Yeah. Not I have to. Oh, right. I have to go to the, th- you know, it's yeah. like, no, I get to. I get Amazing. to do an interview. I get to, yep. mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I feel like you guys are masters of the reframe, and I don't want to take up all of your day. We've been yeah, fortunate we enough to be here for a while. But I wanted to get back to something you said earlier, Laird, about how you would prefer to lose knowing that you put in your best, and that was your best effort, versus a, a shallow victory. And I think for a lot of people, especially in our community, they prefer the shallow victory. Then, and you see a lot of guys who don't aren't able to make that jump to the next level where they're like, well, I would have won if I wasn't hungover. Or, you know, if I didn't go out, if I did this or that. And they always had that little, like, caveat. Disclaimer. That little, that little get out. Sure. But and I think that's, like, a, a marker of someone who's, like, pretty elite at what they do. And that you'd prefer to be like, you know what? I can walk away knowing that yeah. my best wasn't enough on this day, which is a terrifying thing. And you're like, damn it. Like, that was my best. Yeah. And Try just smoked me. Yeah. Like, damn. You beat me today in the breath hold. It's <laughs> bothering me. <laughs> Like, man, I must be in a bad Sometimes place. Sometimes they got to beat him every now writer. <laughs> Keep him in line. The Keep book, him in line. The book reader beat me on the laps. <laughs> Damn right. Nerd. That nerd. <laughs> Twice. <beat me. laughs> but also, I think you have to be realistic, too, that there's that anybody can up anybody on any day at something. Mm-hmm. Right. This doesn't... I mean... That's our whole thing. We, that's to keep we're us. We're in a race with ourselves, though. Yeah, you got to be your best, and that's on yeah, you. Yeah, that exactly. Expre- that's why they say if pigs had wings, they would fly. It's yeah. like I would, I could. What is um, our friend Kenny Johnson? Do you know Kenny Bolt Wrestling? He's the coach now at Miracosta mm-hmm. for wrestling. Oh my gosh, you should talk to him. Okay, amazing. No, he's in, amazing. amazing. And amazing. he's gone. He four trained for Olympian. four Olympics. Oh, wow. Lives in Iowa, Jeez. but I mean, like Qualified a very, a very bright guy. But he that's said something really. Of time. He was with for a uh, Dan. What was Dan's last name? The very famous wrestling. I think well, it was the one the guy coach, that got killed. No, 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 the coach. The, yeah, anyway, yeah. he said that for a long time on there's this tapestry, very old, and it said the three greatest wrestlers to ever live. And he was like at Iowa or something. Yeah. Uh, or maybe this was actually with the USA team. And it was 
B-I-N was the last name. Should have been, could have been, would have been. <laughs> and nobody got it for the longest time. And then, Some people never got it. And Kenny one day was tired. He was kind of cut weight and all the stuff. And he looked. And the coach is like, you get it now. And I think in a way we can excuse, make excuses all the way to wherever. But um, it doesn't get you where you want to go. Right. And it's okay if, by the way, you might be in pursuit of something that you might not be the very best at. But if you give it everything you have, it will give you whatever it is that you need. Right. Yeah, because you know what? You could be the very best at it and still not be getting what you need from it. And mm-hmm. there's plenty of that. If yeah. you take a look around oh, the yeah. world, you're like, hmm, yeah. let me see. Right. There's a lot that of miserable goes back champions. To why. So the why of gold. are you doing it? Yeah. Why that do you want to do it? Yeah. You know? So and I think that that's who am I? What do I really want to do? How do I have a quiet enough space in my life and in my head to keep listening to that? good voice because then our journey makes total sense to us and who we are and right. like even i look i use laird as a great example because laird was yeah he was always good in surfing but he wasn't until his mid-30s that it was like people were like oh that's kind of cool but laird was on his pursuit mm, yeah and and it's the same thing when people go oh you guys do all these different things it's like no we just follow our own inner voice mm. and you will arrive somewhere that is good for you yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm I and we're on the big game I'm on the big game you're on the yeah. long you know game what the big game is <laughs> the big Endurance. game the real championship is you're still around yeah. and you family yeah relationships endure life yeah. I mean that's the big game people forget they're they're talking about these things these sports and yeah. these okay you, these moments of so they, I'm like no this is a big game there's uh-huh. a big game it's called life yeah. Yeah. And, and when you go into the hole and they have the little if they have if you're in a hole with a stone on it if you want that or whatever that mm-hmm. what's it going to say and if it says good man good lover good husband good friend Great father, blah 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 blah. Great, then champion, yeah, champion, right. Right. and then you went and, and you went for the distance, mm-hmm. whatever that. I mean, whatever that number is for you, because we don't know the time right. and the place. But I, for me, that's the real game. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I always love the term the victory through attrition, which just when you're the last guy standing, you win. You don't even need to be any good. You're just standing up there, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Like, you well, know, and, 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 you're, and, and you suck, and but you're. But don't think no one it's else sustainable, left. though. <laughs> too. I think that the other key is don't think it's. A Sustainable. Every new generation wants their heroes. Mm. So just do your thing, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. It'll come and go, and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. And just do it because you really want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's good. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thanks. For we your always time. love seeing you. Yes. Namaste. Always up coming up here. Thank yes. you. Thank Appreciate you guys. you guys. This is for subjecting yourself to the here. coffee <laughs> in the pool. That's right. <laughs> I was telling them earlier. Really, this Get is jacked like up again. My daughter lives. gets excited about Disneyland. This is my Disneyland. <laughs> hey. Well, you can I, come anytime. I said yeah. you guys were Mickey and Minnie, but I don't know if that's, <laughs> yeah. hope that's, that's not okay. offensive. We'll take it. I, I don't, you can't, you couldn't a, possibly that's... offend us. Okay, perfect. No, that's a big Minnie. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, sweetie. Minnie's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. She is. A lot different than you think. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. know about that bow, but everything else, I'm okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Shoots. Shoots. Mahalo. Mahalo.